And I was distracted shopping in a foreign country, having fun, you know, with a very practical brain friend. And so I wasn't in the psychic mode at all. But everything she started doing after that, I was like, this is so much like her. She was gift wrapping my friend's items, basically, and like doing the tape the same way. My grandmother would always sign up to wrap presents at department stores at Christmas time. She loved wrapping and Christmas that much. And she had a very specific way she did it and a little like that she would do while doing it. This woman was doing that. And then I had goosebumps. So I was like, this is totally her. But it felt a little different. I can usually draw my grandmother when I need to, not always in the form of a person that looks just like her, but I, I can. But this felt a little more heavy, like, yes, you're going to have this 30, 40 minutes kind of like in my presence again, but I need to warn you of some things. I felt that too a bit. And basically, um, I just kind of enjoyed that, those moments. And I asked her if I could get a picture and I did. And I sent it to my mom and all my aunties and everyone said, that really looks like her. But what was the craziest was when I, and I don't think she ever knew why I wanted to take her picture. You know, you kind of do a lot of charades and smiles and yeah, I'm understanding you. I'm understanding you, but we weren't really, but it was a lot of mental stuff. She smiled and winked at me as I walked out. My grandmother had one gold tooth. Back in the day, they wouldn't always necessarily fill the whole entire thing with gold. It was like the perimeter of it around the, the three edges that you can see were gold. This woman smiled and winked at me as we walked out and had that same gold tooth in that same place. It gets crazier. I then, and I hadn't done a lot, of, I had meditated a lot because I was on vacation, but I didn't have the special oils or all that, and I was not looking for or asking for anything at this moment. And my grandmother was instrumental in leading me to um, my children's father, basically. And um, that I wasn't really connecting at the moment. But as we left her shop, we made a wrong turn and we turned on this little cobblestone street and it was a dead end. But they have these neat monuments in Portugal where they put up on these very special Manuel and tiles. It's like a kind of a, a pattern they're famous for. They'll put like a, a plaque or the name of the person and what they were famous for in the year they were born and the year they died. And the one that we had taken the wrong turn because I was kind of not paying attention. I was so excited to kind of feel like I had a little bit of my grandma back for a minute um, was the name of uh, my ex-husband whom she had led me to, which is kind of a rare name. And I thought, well, that's strange. You never see this name. It's a very unusual name. And I would have never thought it was Portuguese. And so I thought, well, that's funny. I'll show him. And I was, as I was taking a picture of that plaque with that unusual name that he happens to have, um, a notification came over on my phone and it was him, my ex-husband, commenting about one of my trip pictures from the day before. He never does that ever, ever on Facebook. So I thought, well, this is really strange. My grandma kind of led me to him, advised me, yes, go away to Utah. I believe that's who you're meant to marry and have your children with. And then here I am kind of having her back for a moment and then getting lost in this alley and seeing a reference with his name. But I still kind of felt a heaviness about it. I was kind of like, you know, this is a gift for you. I know you're in Portugal. I know you've been able to travel. I know, you know, all that's gone on all these years that I've been gone. But it was also like, you know, you need to pay some attention and get ready. There's, you know, not you're not going to have as much fun time coming up because you got some heavy stuff coming. And I just kind of felt that, get home, do my hospital shift, because I had to do that like a day after getting home with jet lag. And I come home from that shift, and my daughter's in tears. And unfortunately, my ex-husband is, is sick. So it was just kind of like this, OK, that was, that was wonderful to have her present. But it's not just about remember me, like we've talked about before, because I do hear that all the time in doing this work. The more we forget them and don't tell the upcoming generations about them, the, the happy, funny stories, and don't show the pictures, the more their memory and spirit kind of weakens. But this was like, you need to get ready and you need to get your kids ready. You need to, you know, be strong and be all that be there for him. Not sure why she's always been in between all aspects of my life with him, but she has. <laughs> so that was very unexpected. It just really was.